session on ratio analysis. This is for AQA, A-level business. So the ratios we're going to examine here, gross profit margin, GPM, operating profit margin, OPM, and of course, profit for the year margin, which is the same thing as the net profit margin. The first one we're going to deal with is gross profit margin. So gross profit margin expressed as a percentage. The formula is a gross profit divided by revenue times by 100 because it's expressed as a percentage. So if you use the income statement here, that's the financial statement you'll need to use for ratio analysis with, with respect to these profitability ratios. Gross profit, £150,000. You find that here. Now, gross profit is simply sales revenue minus cost of sales. So £150,000 divided by the revenue or the sales revenue, £200,000 times by 100, and that comes to 75% which basically means for every one pound of sale, 75 pence is gross profit. Analysis points to consider with gross profit margin. So the higher the gross profit margin, the better. You want it to be as high as possible. And it only accounts for direct costs, and therefore it's a measure of productive, and I didn't write it there, oh no I did, efficiency. And number three, it helps inform management in terms of decision making, in terms of comparing to previous years to see if it's worsening or it's improving. And if your gross profit margin is worsening, you might want to put strategies in place as a management. And also against rivals. So you might want to compare yourself to your rivals within your industry. Now let's look at operating profit margin. So the formula is operating profit divided by revenue times by 100 because it's expressed as a percentage. To calculate operating profit, you do sales revenue minus cost of sales minus operating expenses. Or you do gross profit minus operating expenses. Now for this income statement here, you can see that operating profit is 50,000 pounds, that's why it's at the top, divided by 200,000 pounds times by 100, and that comes to 25%, which means for every one pound of sale, 25 pence is operating profit. Now operating essentially means day to day, so it's day to day profit. Analysis points, well the higher the operating profit margin, obviously the better. And this time it's accounting for direct costs, being the cost of sales, and also indirect costs, being the operating expenses. And therefore it's a measure of how well the business is operating, but it's not how well it's performing overall, because it's not including profit from other activities, financing costs, or tax. And so it's looking at operating performance, not overall performance. And the last thing is it helps inform management in terms of their decision making when comparing to their rivals and previous years. Now let's move on to the last of those margins. The final margin to look at is the profit for the year margin, otherwise called the net profit margin. It's the same thing. So the formula is profit for the year. To calculate profit for the year, you need to take sales revenue and subtract cost of sales, subtract operating expenses, add on profit from other activities, subtract net finance costs, subtract tax, and that gets you to the profit for the year or the net profit. A much simpler way to do it would just go operating profit plus profit from other activities minus net finance costs minus tax. But there you go. So the formula is profit of the year divided by revenue or sales revenue. You find that on the top, much easier. And times by 100 because it's expressed as a percentage. So the last thing to look at is chucking in those numbers for this. So 40,000, you can see it there, 40,000 pounds is a profit for the year. And you divide that by 200,000 pounds, that's the revenue, the sales revenue, times by 100, and that gets you to 20%. 20% means for every one pound of sale, 20 pence is net profit, or profit for the year. Last thing to think about are analysis points. So analysis points, higher the profit for the year margin, the better, kind of obvious. And number two is that it's going to account for your direct costs, your cost of sales, your indirect costs, your operating expenses, and other stuff. And what's particularly important is your net finance costs, because your net finance cost is directly related to really how geared the business is. Maybe the business needs to take on debt in order to set up or expand. So it is a true reflection of the business performance. And it's particularly important for those geared businesses that might have a very large net finance costs in that column there. The final thing is it helps inform management of decision making and that will be useful for previous years and rivals. I hope that helps. See you at the next sesh.